Regulation. Do we need it? I, I think actually yes we do, but not to the extent that we need to go to meds. That's just not even an issue. But there are issues. And here's where they are. If you've got a system where all of the ingredients that are used in the e-liquid, and this is where it needs to be, all of the ingredients that are used in the e-liquid are known, and are known to be safe, or safe enough, for what we do, then the world is perfect, isn't it? However, we, as customers, need to know that that's the case and here's a case in point if you are out and about wherever you are and you go to one of these sandwich huts and get yourself a sandwich you know that they have had to adhere to food hygiene standards in other words the sandwich that you get has been prepared by somebody who is either wearing nitrile gloves or has washed their hands in antibacterial doohickeys and what's its names. So you're not going to catch berry berry or Ebola off the sandwich that you buy from the sandwich hut. The same applies if you go to a, a sushi bar and have sushi or sashimi. Here's the thing though. If you go to Japan and have fugu, fugu can kill you if it's not prepared by somebody who really knows what they're doing. Now, fugu is puffer fish. And in that fish, there is a little gland that secretes a very, very, very potent nerve toxin. Um, it's very, very, very potent to the degree that actually, if you get it in you, you're dead. It's that good. That's how powerful it is. And it's been considered for years a delicacy, this fugu. Apparently it tastes gorgeous, but the chefs that prepare it have to be licensed. They have to be fully trained and fully licensed to prepare fugu. So if I was going to go into a sushi bar, let's say in Sunderland, and they had fugu on the menu, I'm going to want to know that the guy that's preparing that has got the license and is dead good and knows exactly what he's doing and apparently it is the case that if the chef is properly licensed you're 100% safe there's no risk whatever because he knows where this little gland is and you don't get anything out of it and he knows what to look for to discover whether the gland's been burst in the fish before he started cutting it to bits If that's the case with fugu, then I'd kind of like to think that we have the same level of protection with e-liquid. There are certain things that just didn't ought to be in e-liquid. Diacetyl, acetylpropionol, and there are probably other things as well. They need to be on a blacklist, a completely prohibited list of things, or things that are completely prohibited from being in e-liquid and I want to know that there's testing in place so that when I buy it I know I'm not getting any of the stuff I did not be getting so there needs to be some regulations about that and that implies there needs to be regulation but there's another thing as well I want to know that there's not going to be bogies and pubes and dog hairs and bits of spider and chunks of fly and bits of snail 
in the juice that I'm buying. I want to know that the juice that I'm buying is not created in somebody's ensuite bathroom. And those of you that have been around for a while know what I'm referring to there. I want to know that if there's a rabbit adrift and somebody finds it, I can be told that you have got a bottle of batch number 5722 and we have discovered that there's rat droppings in it and so we're withdrawing it from the market, it's being recalled. I want to know that that system is in place and that implies a level of regulation. It's not punitive regulation. That kind of thing does nothing but protect the consumer. That level of protection I can live with. So yes, we do need some form of regulation. Because I'm afraid, history has shown that the market will not get shot of people who are not adhering to basic food hygiene standards which is what's needed and it also has shown that people vendors certain vendors will still sell diacetyl laced liquids even though they'll say look there's diacetyl in it and we know that even so it's still safer to vape than it is to smoke but even so it shouldn't be there so yes some regulation please I think that would be a good idea. I have no doubt whatever that there'll be people watching this that will disagree with me vehemently and say, no, bugger off. They should have no say at all about what we do. Well, I'm sorry, if that's what you think, you're living in cloud cuckoo land because there's no way on the face of this planet are we going to escape some kind of regulation. It's bound to happen. It cannot not happen. That boat has sailed. So yes, proportionate regulation, let's make sure the e-juice is safe. Outside of that, yes, there's nothing really else needs to be done.